And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge, this time Jot Scratchpad, authored by none other than John Hammond, who if you haven't checked out his channel, you definitely should. He's very good, very thorough. I like him a lot. And as a result, this challenge is also excellent. He's done a hell of a job. Check the admin Scratchpad. And then we get a link. So let's go through the link. And we see Jot at the top, and it says powered by JWT, and there's a link. So let's open that up. Welcome to Jot. Jot is an online scratch pad where you can jot down wherever you'd like. Consider it a notebook for your thoughts. Jot works best in Google Chrome for some reason. You'll need to log in to access the Jot scratch pad. You can use any name other than admin because the admin user gets a special scratch pad. So that's probably what we're looking for right there. It says register with your name. You can use your name as a login because that's quick and easy to remember. If you don't like your name, please use a short one like John. And again, we can see it's another link. Let's open that one up. And we can see here it is John the Ripper. And what John the Ripper is, is it's an open source project that works to crack passwords or uh, ripping is the process of taking a hash or a password or something like that and trying to figure out what it actually is. That's a huge hint for what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna enter my name as please subscribe, which is something John Hammond does all the time. So kind of in tribute to him here, hit enter. And we get a very similar page. Now we have a little area to write. It also says, hello, please subscribe, the username I gave. And we can type in here and we have a logout button and everything else seems to be the same. Let's go ahead and let's inspect the page and see if anything stands out to us. And I'm not seeing anything there. So let's take a look. So a jot is a Java script web token, I believe is the full name. And we can see here in our cookies, we have a JWT set. And let's take a look at what a jot is. Now, fortunately, we have this very nice website that tells us it's uh, a way to represent claims securely between two parties. And this website allows you to decode, verify, and generate JWTs. And we can see the rough format. It seems to be separated by a period. And you have a header, a payload, and then an HMAC, a verify signature section. So if you remember, and you can see they're color coded. So this is the verify section, purple is the payload, and then the header is the red. If you remember in the cookie challenge, we looked at how people can use cookies to set information on the client, and then the client shows that information again back to the server. And I used a simple analogy of a deli counter where you go and you get, say, 10 pounds of meat on your sandwich, it's a big sandwich, cheeses and all kinds of things, and they write a ticket for that sandwich. And then you don't pay there, you pay up front. And we talked about the problems that could happen when you have that ticket and you could potentially change the information. So what a jot actually does is rather than having things that can easily be changed, it has this signature section. And the signature section is what makes it secure. We'll check before we use any of this information to be sure that the hash matches the payload. And then we sign the hash with our signature or with our, our private key. And that's what makes it secure is people don't know what the private key is, so they can't just change the information. And let's grab our JWT and we'll take a look at what it is. So as you can see, we have a declaration up top of the algorithm that's used. We have a user, please subscribe, which is what we gave it. And then we have the verification portion. So it's very simple. So just to show you what this is doing, let's edit the value. I'm gonna create a new file over here I'm gonna call these jots I made. And the first one will be for the user, please subscribe. We got this jot. We're gonna go in here and we are going to log out. And we'll do another one, please sub. Maybe an exclamation point and we'll hit enter. And we can see this has been updated. So we're now the user, please sub exclamation point. And if we look at our jot, it should be different as well. And we can see just on inspecting, it does seem to change a little bit. So let's bring this guy over and let's take a look. And we just expect this payload section to change slightly. And it does, great. So now, what if, remember how we talked about um, the server trusting the client and taking information from them and then using it in the page. What if we change out this cookie? So I just changed this to be, please subscribe. Uh, it's red, that may mean it won't work. We'll find out in a minute. Hmm, it's not, not updating like I expected. Let's see, Let's see what I did wrong there. 
edit value, delete it, bring in the new value. Why is it going red? Hmm. It doesn't like that. Am I copying it wrong? Okay, I guess I was copying it wrong. So let's refresh. Please subscribe. So we've changed users on the basis of changing the cookies. So this is good. Now can we just make an edit here and change this to be user admin and get that special scratch pad that we were talking about. So let's try that. We've made a change. We're going to copy this guy and we're going to update the value. And now we're going to refresh. And we get an internal server error. And the reason we're getting this error is because the signature doesn't match what we provided. So the server fails. We can't just arbitrarily edit things, which brings us to the next portion, which is John the Ripper. These things are signed by a private key. And if that private key is weak, we'll be able to figure out what it is because we have an example. We have two examples, actually, of uh, payloads. So we know that somehow we sign all this stuff and we end up with a valid JWT for a payload of user, this is moving on me, I don't know why, user, please subscribe. So given this, we could start just guessing. And, and I want to emphasize, that's all we can do is guess, because this is actually cryptographically secure, and really, you can only brute force these things. But if they're weak, say you used a password like password, it's more manageable, and you could potentially crack it. What we're going to do is we're going to follow these excellent instructions that I found by Googling. This guy talks about how to hack JWT tokens. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a separate file and we're going to put this weak jot into it. We'll just pick one of them, doesn't matter which one. And then we will open a terminal. We'll navigate to the folder where this is. If we do an ls, we can see weak jot right there. And then we're interested in running, let me see if I can make the terminal font larger, actually. Something I've been meaning to do. Perfect. So we are interested in running John, which you can see is already installed here. Make this a little larger. And what John the Ripper is doing is it's going to take an input, so our weak jot, and a word list. And remember how I told you it can't do anything other than quickly guess and check because this is strong cryptography and it doesn't have any known weaknesses. So all it can do is rapidly ask, does this potential password fit? Does this one, does this one? So what we're going to need to use is a word list. And we have some in the default Kali setup. So word lists, and then rock you. And what rock you is, as we start to look at some of these, is there was a large password breach of a company called rock you a couple of years back. It was about 10 million, maybe 14 million users. And all the passwords were leaked. Researchers, they view this as being very representative of how real world users pick their passwords. People do things like one, two, three, four, five, password, I love you, princess, very simple stuff. So going back to John, we are going to provide a word list and that's what we're going to be guessing from. And we're also going to tell it what format this is. And we're going to say it's HMAC SHA-256. And we're getting that from the algorithm line of the header. Then we're going to run this. I messed something up here. Maybe it's format equals, word list equals. Perfect. And as we can see, I already cracked this. So if I wanted to see this, I could do, I believe it's minus minus show. The issue that we're running into is it's trying to be smart. And it says, I've already seen this file. I already know what the password is. It's I love Pico. If we wanted to see how this will work for you when you run it the first time, we need to remove that cached file that's telling it that you've already run. That's john.pot by default. And then we'll rerun this. And you can see it loaded one password hash and it's processing. 
it was in between I Love Pinky and I Love Patricia when it found I Love Pico as plain text of this. So now that we know I Love Pico is the password, we can fill that in here. We're going to sign with that and we're told it's a weak secret and it absolutely is. And then we're changing this to be admin at this point. And we're going to take our jot and just so that everyone understands what we've done now is we have forged a jot. We learned what the password is. And so we're creating our own jot that will be verified by the server and will be seen as valid. And we're going to use that over here. So I'll recreate this and I'll refresh the page. And it says, hello admin. And it gives us the Pico CTF flag. So let's go back here. Let's submit our flag. And it works. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If it was, you can help me out by liking, commenting, subscribing, hitting the bell. Thanks a lot. Bye.